Okay, so the first virtual machine that we're going to fire up in Hyper-V is going to be our Server 2012 R2 box. Now, if you just got done watching the host setup, it's going to be very similar as far as installation is concerned. In fact, it's going to be identical. So let's get going here. Okay, so I'm on my Hyper-V box here. This is actually my Hyper-V server that I have here. It's got a bazillion gigs of RAM, and it's got a ton of hard drive space in it. Uh, just ignore these virtual machines. These are not the virtual machines you are looking for. These are ones that I use in my own production environment here at the Justice League. Yeah, I know. See, Batman reference, huh? So I'm going to go and create a new virtual machine on my Batcave. So I'm going to select New, Virtual Machine. It's going to walk me through my four-hour wizard. Four-hour wizard, not really. I just like pe making people think I work a long time. I'm going to hit next. Asks, what's the name of the machine that you'd like to create? Well, I'm going to call this one Ethical Hacking, or EH, Server 2012. Maybe I should do R2 just, to, just in case, in case I have another box on there called 2012. Now, it's asking me We're also where do I want to st store the virtual machines. You can store them in the default location, or you can specify somewhere else. So I'm going to just put them here. Actually, let's put them in a different location. I want to put them on my D drive under CEH project. I'm just going to, again, I'm a stickler for organization. So I'm going to create a folder here. I'm going to call it VMs. And this is where I'm going to put all my VMs. And it'll create a subdirectory for me, named after the machine. And what this is asking for is not actually where do you want to install, but where do you want to put the configuration files that make up the virtual machine. I'm going to hit Next. It then asks what generation of Hyper-V do you want to create. Trust me on this one. Without Again, this is not a Hyper-V class. We're just going to take Gen 1. And it says, how, how much memory do you want to utilize? Well, you need at least on this box here, you probably want to have like 4 gig. On this box, let's go ahead and just give it 248 megabit, which is 2 gigs of hard drive space or of memory. Now, I know this isn't a ton of memory associated to the machine, but again, this machine is going to have, actually, take that back. Let's do 4 gig because we're going to install SQL on this box. We're going to really kind of put it to its limit here. Uh, we'll also be installing the web services on this box as well. Don't worry about the dynamic memory. We're just going to hit next. And it says, okay, what network do you want to hook it up to? Well, you can see I've got a couple of networks here. I don't want to necessarily put it on my production environment or on my DAG network, so I'm going to put it on my hacking network because that's why I created it, so it's completely separate. I'm going to hit Next. Here's where it's saying where do you want to put the virtual machine, the, the file that represents the virtual machine. You'll notice it picked up the name. The new extension now for Hyper-V is VHDX, and you'll see here that the directory it's going to create or it's going to place it inside of CEH project, VMs, and see, I told you, it created a directory there, and it created another subdirectory, or it will create a new subdirectory called virtual hard disks, and that's good. I'm going to leave it right there. It also says, how big do you want this hard drive to be? Now, the default for this is to be a dynamically expanding hard drive, meaning that even though I specify 127 gigs, it's not going to take up 20, uh, 127 gigs on my physical drive. The host OS will only use as much space as the file takes up. But to the virtual machine, it thinks it has 127 gig. So you can actually over allocate. And 127 is the default, so that's fine for me. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. It then says, okay, we need to install an operating system because obviously this is a new machine. Do you want to install an OS later? Nope. I want to actually do this based off of an ISO. And hey, here we go with those ISOs. Remember we downloaded them? We put them here inside of our ISO directory. And there's my 2012 trial. I'm going to select Open. Hit Next. I get a summary screen. I'm going to go ahead and select Finish. It creates that virtual machine for me, and it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and right-click on my server, select to connect. It shows me, obviously, since the machine's off, it'd be if it was a physical box, I'd be staring at a black screen because it's not turned on. They're at least nice enough to tell me that, hey, it's currently turned off. Wish our physical boxes would show us that, right? I'm going to go ahead and select the Start button to start it up. I can also come up here and select Actions and then select Start. 
I could also just use the shortcut key, which is Control-S. So I'm going to hit a Control-S. The virtual machine should fire up, should pick up my CD or my DVD drive. Move this over so we can see this. Actually, we'll go full screen. Check this out. Shabam! Uh-oh, I'm a little off my resolution. It should fix itself, though, here. Uh, very similar. Actually, it's not similar. It's exactly what we saw in the previous installation on the host machine. We're just going to go through the same steps. Select Next. Again, it's going to come up and say, which operating system would you like to install? Again, I'm going to just do a Server 2012 R2 Standard Evaluation Edition, but make sure you're not using Core. We're going to use the GUI. I'm going to hit Next. Accept the EULA. Again, remember, there's nothing to upgrade because it's a fresh install, so we're going to do a custom. I'm going to take the whole partition, and it's another waiting game. We'll pause the video and come back when it's finished up. Okay, so it's finished installing. All of our features or updates. Again, we don't need to wait for it to reboot. Nothing magical about the green line. We'll just go ahead and reboot. Make sure you don't press a key. Oh, there we go. So again, we're going to be asking us for a password. We're going to use our top secret password. Again, if you didn't see the host setup, there it is right there. We're going to use PA dollar sign dollar sign W0RD. I'm going to come down here and type that in as again. Hit finished. Okay, we're going to log in here. To log in, if you don't know the shortcut for it, you're going to have to come back to a windowed environment so that you can get to the actions. So in order to throw a control delete, if you throw an actual control delete, it'll throw it at the host machine, and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to come back and window this out a bit here so that I can get to my action, and I'm going to throw a control delete and there's the password to log in. Again, we'll go back to full screen again. So I'm going to adjust the resolution down to the 1280 by 720. There we go. Keep the changes. You bet. So there's my Server 2012 R2 box up and running. Now, I will see a network is not identified because I can't get out to the Internet and there's no domain controller or there's no DNS server specified at this point. So that's, that's okay. So I'm going to fire up the server manager dashboard. Before we install any roles or features in this box, I'm going to go through and tweak this box just like we did our host machine. Again, notice that the default computer name is, yes, that random name. So I'm going to click on the name and come in to change the name. And this one here, I'm going to call it Server 2012 R2. I hit OK. Now you may be saying, Dale, why didn't you call it EH, Ethical Hacking? Because this is the Ethical Hacking name is only to represent itself in Hyper-V to the host machine. Once I'm inside, I don't necessarily want to call it that. I'm just going to call it like a normal server. I could have called this server 5 or server 12. I'm going to hit next, though, because I don't need to, or I'm going to hit closed. It's going to tell me I need to restart, but I'm not going to restart yet because if you remember, i got a couple other things I'm going to do here. First thing, I'm going to go into my IE enhancement and turn it off. And the other option I'm going to do here is I'm going to come into my control panel, Actually, if I come to right click, if I right click on the start button, I can come up to my system section and go into my advanced system settings and under performance, hit the settings button and then go to my DEP. Remember, we're going to turn that off. I know it says it's turning it on, but I'm turning it on only for Windows, not for any other service or program that I install. I'm going to hit OK. This requires a restart as well. I'm going to hit OK. Okay, and let's restart this bad boy. Tell it we're starting it for other. So 
So I'm going to log in again. Again, I'm going to window this here just for a second. Throw control delete. Give our password. Again, we'll go back to full screen. You guys won't have to go through the same steps that you just saw me go through. If you notice, I've had to window twice and then expand back out twice. Uh, and I can't throw, personally, I can't throw Control-Alt-N from my machine because I'm actually getting into my bat cave remotely. So it adds another layer of virtualization, or basically I'm getting into my machine remotely and then running virtualization where you guys won't have that issue. Now, again, if you come down here and you see these services, you can right-click on them. Oops, excuse me, you can left-click on them. I just like to make sure that none of them are services that are supposed to start automatically. The automatic with delay start, it just means that it hasn't fired up yet, and these eventually will fire off for me. Okay, so what we want to do next is install IIS as a web server, because it'll be one of the things that we'll try to attack. Uh, we're going to come in here into our add roles and features. So I'm going to hit next. It's going to be a role-based installation. It's going to be on my server 2012R2 box. Notice I've got an IP address. We'll be changing this up a bit, a little bit later on as well. I'm going to hit next. It says, okay, well, what role do you want to install? Well, the role I'd like to install is IIS. And when I select to install the web server IIS, it tells me that I need to have these tools installed as well. So I'm going to add those features in. I'm going to hit next. Now it's asking me for features specific to this particular machine. So I'm going to go through and select the following features to install. Uh, I'm going to do my back bits. I'm going to install bits. I'm going to take those as default. I'm also going to install my bit locker options. And I'm going to take branch cache, client for FS. We're going to just go ahead and click all of these right here. Take the additional features, group policy management console, the uh, ink, internet printing, and I think that's all I'm going to take on that one. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Hit next again, and here it just comes up and asks me for the different roles uh, within IIS that I want to make sure I support. We don't need to make any changes here because we've already installed the IIS options. I'm going to hit next. Now it's going to ask me for WDS. And this is because it's a subcomponent of one of the other features that we selected. I'm just going to go ahead and hit next here. I'm going to go ahead and take the defaults here of both a deployment and a transport server. What a WDS server does for us is it basically allows you to push out images via network to different machines. So we're going to go ahead and hit next here and just hit install. And we're going to let the hamsters run around the wheel on this one for a few minutes. So we'll come back as soon as it's done installing. Now you'll notice after it's done installing all of those features, it does tell me that it's pending a reboot. So we're going to hit closed. And we're just going to simply come over to our start button, right click on it, select shut down or sign out, and do a restart. And again, we're going to give it a reason. We're just going to again say it's other. It's not important right now. And we'll let this bad boy restart. Okay, we're again going to log in. I've got to do my login a little differently than you guys. Okay, so the next feature we're going to install, we'll be doing this both on the server 2012 box as well as the 08 box, is a service that we use for managing network devices or managing network nodes. We refer to it as the SNMP service. So I'm going to come here into my add roles or features. Again, I could also come up here to the manage section and select add roles and features. And I'm going to again run through my four hour wizard here. I'm going to continue through the server selections. It's just this server. The roles, it's not a role, it's a feature I'm going to turn on. So I'm going to come here to features. And by the way, I don't know if you know this or not, but you can just, at the beginning of this, you can just click on features and it'll take you right down to that section. You're like, where were you a half hour ago, Dale? And I'm going to select here to install my 
SNMP service. It tells me that I need to install some additional tools. I'll hit Add the Features. And then I'm just going to select Next, hit Install. Tells me here that it's successfully installed. I'll hit close. Notice here under my action flag, I have that it successfully installed. So I can get rid of that. And then I'm going to come into 